please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Lawless movie thoughts. Now, I want to start with the... the idea of the corrupt federal agent. I don't know what's... what it is in the book. I haven't read it. And I don't know how well the book reflects reality. But that is a bit of an easy way out for the movie. To just say, well, he was corrupt. Sure, we've had these... The, the three leads we follow for the entire movie are breaking the law. But at the end of the movie, we still have this this sort of Hollywood action movie climax. It, it almost even becomes a big shootout. At least it does still... You know, there are not a lot of bodies at the end of it. And it doesn't completely break out into a full-on battle between police and lawbreakers. But yeah, they, they get the... They, they get to kill the villain. And... Yeah, it's... It's just too easy. I, I think it's one of the film's weaknesses. I mean, I, I don't blame them. I, I certainly also wanted him to die after killing Cricket. But you, you almost have to wonder if Cricket... He, when he met... don't remember her name, but I'm pretty sure it had X's, at least one X, and as much as two I's in it. So I'm gonna call her Trixie. Or was it Brinksy? I'm going to go with Trixie. He met Trixie. Cricket did. Not long before he died. And she said, pleasure to meet you. And he responded, as a good boy should, the pleasure is all mine. Well, Cricket, I hope the pleasure was worth it. Because if Jack hadn't brought her there, you might have still been alive and the moonshining business might have continued to be booming instead of just going boom. Now, I do quite like the, the, the bits about the legend, especially when it gets a little when we sort of get a reality check, and it's like, did you really think that you that you walked all the way, in? and and that that's his response? This whole thing of, I picked you up in my car and drove all the way to the hospital, and I'm not doing that again. That was you. I thought I walked. That's perfect. And she even says, you would believe your own legend. That's, that's really good. And, and yeah, the, the stuff with how immortal they were. And then it ends up with him just dying from... <laughs> it was pneumonia, because he fell in ice cold water. And, and I love that they don't say that right away. At first you just see him fall in the in the ice. And, and you know, the moment that he starts dancing there, you know that he's gonna go right into the... and... 
then when he does, and then he gets back up, and you're like, you didn't see that coming, and then it's up oh, at the end, it was just pneumonia that took him out. Was... And considering the stuff we were told at the very beginning of the narration about what they survived, you understand why there was a legend. That's pretty impressive. Or incredible. Now... I like that the... that this movie <laughs> exists and was made currently. I think it's... It's important to note that just because the government says something, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily right. It doesn't mean that it should be that way, and sometimes it makes sense to resist. And especially as I not so subtly expressed in my regular review video, this is a pretty clear, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but I mean just historically, there's a clear, there, there are similarities between the way marijuana is now and the way liquor was during Prohibition. It's, it's uh, essentially harmless. It's just, it's all about moderation. And, yeah, it, it, there, there's really no reason, basically, for it to be illegal. It's, I, I could maybe understand it with harder drugs, but not marijuana. Anyway, yeah, I just want to say, I, I think it's really good that a movie is being made that has lead characters actually stand up to that, and it doesn't really end with them learning their lesson. It actually... It reminded me of a Scorsese gangster picture with that last line of, it sure does get quiet. <laughs> that, yeah. Now. This is, this next bit is not going to be very classy, so you can consider yourselves warned. When Forrest was being a little slow in reading Maggie, I think, Maggie's signs, and she just went and undressed and went into bed with him. Thank you, Forrest. Thank you for being dense. I appreciated it. I'm sure the cameraman appreciated it. Yes, thank you. That is all for that, I, I think. There was some, some kind of sexual perversion with, with Pierce, wasn't there? There, there? Why was there a naked African-American woman in his room, on the bed, and on like a piece of paper. Well, I guess the piece of paper might have just been the black white kind of. What was it? Jim Crow, I think it was called. Those laws, segregation. I did really like that the movie showed that, that you could see. There were signs for whites, for blacks, and there you even see distinctly in the frame, in the foreground of one shot of a white guy, white boy walking up to a fountain that says four whites and using it. Yeah, I, I really like that detail. It really helped sell it and kind of remind. And also that real, it was a bit of a culture shock for me seeing this party at African Americans where there was a guy, I guess it was awake, and yeah, they're basically, they're like pouring liquor in his mouth, and he's got a 
someone's put a cigarette in his mouth. And the, the body is standing upright in the, the casket or whatever. Excuse me. And everyone's singing and dancing. And yeah, that. <laughs> Never been to one of those. But it looked int interesting. For sure. <laughs> the, the courting Jack courting Trixie was quite amusing. It, it was, uh, I, like I said in the review, but both romances are very sweet, uh, very, very charming. And you, you feel like the, the guy's heart is really in it both times. I like what we have with Forrest, it's not even, he never makes a move. She has to climb into bed with him, naked, before he even, and, and even then, he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> that is just perfect. And then he turns out to be a surprisingly quick study after that. Anyway, the, yeah, the, 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 the courting, Jack and Trixie, with, with the going to the church, and then he's like, and, and it's kind of awkward, and he's like, okay, he sits down, and, and then she has to wash his feet, and he's just been, been drinking a bit, and, He's really nervous, and, and all this commotion going on, he's in this unfamiliar environment, and yeah, he kind of, or almost, or entirely throws up. And it was a little unclear, it felt like the, the cameraman got like, shy, maybe he felt bad for Jack. And he didn't. Okay, it's, it's okay, we won't show. But yeah, that you could just tell that that was what was about to happen, and that, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to get my feet wet. Now, that might more or less cover what I wanted to say. I was a little disappointed Gary Oldman wasn't in it more. That's not really the fault of the film. It's the marketing that made it look as though he had a more prominent role. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe I just really wanted to see him in that role. But it was he was really cool for every frame of it. And I like how he saves Jack because he finds out he's a Bondurant. And then Jack gets the price he wants. And here you go, here's the address for the guy who you know, cut your brother's throat and 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 he's you know, going to Forrest and Forrest is just sitting there and the eyes are just telling him everything he needs to know. He doesn't even need to open his mouth. And Jack goes up and explains, you know, five grand for all this, way more, you know, double, twice the price, sold it way faster. Oh, and here is the... the you know, he, he was uh, the guy who had them cut my throat. Nope, here, and here's the address. Actually, I don't remember if he thought that. Anyway. And, and he's like, what, need me to do anything else? Should I wash the floor too? <laughs> and then the revenge for the cutting. And Jack doesn't get to take part. And he shows up late, and Howard is there. You know, Jack, people are saying, people have always been saying, you won't got no balls. They were wrong. That's, that's really good. And I love how, with, with the cutthroat, and that, like, the doctor is like, don't let him speak. And the one thing he says is, 
you should have been there, uh, Howard. Just that is, I, I felt like that really summed up the character. He's just a throat slit. He's not supposed to talk. Probably hurts like a son of a bitch to talk. And he still lays down the law. You should have been there, Howard. That was really... I love when Howard is like going just nuts on these two guys. And then... And, and Forrest is just sitting there. He's drinking a little bit. And, and, and then he just says, You should have known better than to come by when Howard has been drinking whiskey. <laughs> that just really... And, and he's about to gasoline down the, the, down the one guy's throat. Man, the violence was really... And, and when you see the, the, the tar being poured over the, the, the guy's back, it's... And, and I like how that actually starts with you not being quite clear on what you're looking at. You just see this sort of this mass of, of something. And then you just stop, like, and, and gradually you realize that it's, it's tar and you just see, I don't know how they did it, but it really looked like it was burning his skin, I don't know, CG maybe? Because it, it was like pouring down him and as it did, the, the sort of burns appear that was really... Seriously unpleasant. I like how in the beginning, when when Jack is sort of surprised outside, the outside the wake, and then Forrest comes and he's just talking and and he's he's philosophizing. Yeah. What you may not realize right now is that your life is about to change. And then suddenly, with the, what's it called? Knuckle iron? Some, yeah, I think. And, yeah, just this, because that's the first time you see them be violent. And, and at the, you, you don't know yet that Forrest is just this wrecking ball that will not let anything interrupt the business or tarnish their name. And, and then right afterwards, Jack's just like, yeah, it just surprised me, that's all. Which is probably not entirely true. I, th I thought that it worked well with sort of the way he he kept being the weak one. He, he was the one who made the mistake of getting, you know, Letting them follow him when he went out there with Trixie, and he, yeah, he he got beat up by Pierce's character, whose name is Luton, eludes me at the moment, and and yeah, getting jumped there at the beginning, all all these different things. Anyway, about Forrest's character, and and him being this strong, adamant type. I also really love when he when he has a talk with Jack about how it's not okay to let himself get beaten up. With you know, we're Bondurants, we survive by fear. If the fear goes away, we're dead. And and Jack tries to like yeah, no, I I get it. I don't think you do get it. And and this whole. I just, don't let it happen again. You, you really get the sense. The, those eyes, man, what a performance. You really believe that this is just, this is how he controls it. This is, he, he has this power. Of, he, he is the only one keeping the trio. That, that was the sense I got from the movie. Making making it work. Howard definitely has his uses, 
but he's unreliable in, in several different ways. He, he, he drinks too much, you can't expect him to necessarily be there to be on guard when you need him to be, hence the thought of why would I do that, Howard? And he's also, I got the feeling that he really should have been, what was it, howling like a coyote, I, th I think, to warn Cricket and Jack sooner, and, and Trixie, sooner when the police came there. I really, f I felt bad for her when she got, because she's like, oh, she has to go home in that dress. Her daddy is not gonna like that. And then you see the dress being burned. Now, I did really like that. I mean, basically the two female characters in the movie are love interests and that's what they are. Which is, it's, it's okay, but yeah. With that said, they are actually characters. They actually exist. They, you have Maggie saying, I'm not going to pull you out of the, if, if you come back basically dead, I'm not going to be there. And you have Trixie actually clearly, like Jack says in the final narration, she was the type to stray a bit. You, you have her sort of be, I mean, yes, she's a, uh, the daughter of a priest, a Quaker priest, no less. And Quaker oats are part of a good, healthy breakfast. Just ask, I think, Wilford Brimley. Anyway, the, the, you can clearly tell that she is not completely devout, I guess, when he takes a picture of her, and she, at first she's like, oh, if my daddy caught me with one of those, she, you know, no telling what he'd do to me, but then she poses, and then she says, that's what they look, that's what the movie stars do in California, so it, she, she is aware of that, and is maybe even a little drawn to that, she is drawn to the physical world, and glamour, which is not very, it doesn't fit with, with a sort of simple, not, not saying simple as a negative, but minimalistic religion where you're not supposed to enjoy. They're wearing black clothes all the time. She even covers her hair. There was a while when I worried that Jack was going to be hooking up with a baldy. Now... But yeah, the family dynamic, that was what I was on. Howard can be useful, certainly, but he's not reliable. And Jack is hot-headed and not entirely ready for... He's, he's a bit too... He, he has some early success, and then he gets careless and costs them all this, all, all these what are they, distilleries or something, brewery thingies. I suppose that more or less covers it. I really like Pierce's reaction to receiving. I have to do it. Receiving a package in the mail. I should have taken my glasses off before that. And you know, it's, you know, the CSI opening gag. Suppose that more or less covers it. Yes, I think so. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.